Hey everyone, and welcome back to another Planet Zoo build. Today we are going to build a funky monkey house. Well, technically, uh, this term is not really correct, but I thought just, you know, that was like a funny thing. But what we're going to do is um, a multi-species habitat, which is featuring quite a lot of uh, Asian animals in it. And uh, the idea behind this one is um, completely loose, because I, I just wanted to do something cool looking and like a, a real nice habitat for all these animals uh, from Asia. You know, some new animals, some existing ones. And I think it's it turned out really great. Um, I know that, you know, realistically wise, uh, this is potentially not the best you could ever do. Um, there are some, some you know, real, realism flaws, I would call them, in here. Um, but to be honest, I don't care for this build. This is just purely meant to be like a cool habitat, um, something for you to download, maybe use in your own park. Um, the setup is rather simple this time, uh, so you can and easily put it all in. So if you are going to download this, I would highly recommend to re-watch the first minute here where I set up the path because this over here is already pretty much the most complicated bit of it. Uh, the rest is just simply put it down, plop it down, put the stuff in, easy going. Um, I will have a little real-time part at the end. Uh, as always, in the last couple of uh, days, I will not have the full commentary. This is, you know, just purely down to my limited time at the moment because of the baby, you know, um, having having the normal kind of quirks here and there now or with the baby getting a little bit more active, a little bit more less sleepy and um, the usual stuff. I mean, the parents amongst you will understand um, and the others potentially also have an understanding of, of what's going on. However, um, let's talk about this build. So there is no real uh, architecture idea behind this that I saw somewhere. Like the only thing, only inspiration I had in my mind was like a, a kind of an open uh, stadium, half open stadium, almost like an arena. And uh, that's all I had as an inspiration. And then I just went completely loose, um, you know, building some kind of things I had in mind for a while for different builds and I tried to just uh, put it together. I have to say it worked out pretty well in the end. Um, I'm quite happy. I changed the design idea midway through the build. So um, at the beginning I thought it will be a fully roundish, uh, almost dome build, um, somewhat similar to the half dome we had and then just one side open. Um, but I just changed it a little bit because I just found it a bit more appealing um, to have some uh, different in the rounded uh, shapes. You will see in a couple of seconds when we start to make those uh, dome shapes. Um, they took quite a while, but uh, I think I'm just still very pleased with them. It just kind of uh, took some time to get the right uh, rotation in, but I think it's always important to just, you know, test a little bit further um, how you want to set it up before really going in, because otherwise you have some issues later on. But yeah, so um, I'm really happy about uh, also the last couple of weeks, what's, you know, going on on my channel and stuff like that. So I simply say thank you to all of you guys, because you've been so supportive, you know, also, you know, during the days now where I'm not so active on the channel and unfortunately, well, not unfortunately, I, you know, that's the wrong, wrong term for you maybe it's unfortunate for me it's the most fortunate situation ever uh, but for the next couple of weeks there will be still a little bit more delay in you know in the content uh, I think it's totally fine um, but you know the way you guys support the channel is still very amazing and if you are new to the channel and uh, you like the content and you want to stay um, please consider subscribing that is going to help uh, the content the most and also the channel the most and uh, I will be back in a couple of weeks with uh, the usual kind of stuff uh, I will do some changes though um, um, to the content in general, but I will let you know about this when ever I'm really back. Um, it's just streamlining it a little bit, so don't you worry about this. I have I have some ideas in mind to make it all a bit more easy for you and for me, but um, this should not be the point of today's uh, talk. I just want to again say thank you, or I do say thank you to you, uh, everyone, um, you know, sitting in front of your monitors, uh, your smartphones, your consoles, whatever. Um, the support, especially also in Bob's Farm, is uh, simply amazing. And if you guys haven't seen Bob's Farm yet, um, Bob's Farm is a series I have pre-recorded uh, during the last five months, I guess, um, in preparation of uh, being a dad and not being able to, you know, maintain a schedule or whatnot. So I have recorded actually 12 episodes um, of a little farm series where we are going to have like a lot of different like farm um, habitats that, you know, are not really habitats. It's basically just like a typical farm. And if you guys are interested in that, I would highly recommend to check it out. Um, it's really fun. Um, I had a lot of fun building it. Um, it was a bit of complicated stuff to keep it a secret for all these times. 
times during streams and during stuff like that but it was really cool to do and uh, the end result is pretty pleasing and maybe maybe we even go on with it afterwards i definitely have to wait for your feedback on that but so far the feedback has been amazing so in case you guys have a spare minute check it out um i would be more than happy to welcome you guys in this series as well because again it was a lot of fun it's definitely a change of pace it's definitely a change of topic um so it's it's really cool and i loved it a lot so yeah um i have to jump back into the build because this is the this is the situation where i decided to change the layout i really wasn't too happy with how it turned out especially not with the sun and so on over here um you know in this game always you have a bit of a problematic thing regarding the sun i would love to have the addition um that that Prestar Kingdom has for the photo mode. They don't have it in real time, but for the photo mode, you can basically change the sun and light position in any direction uh, you want. And that is really helpful in order to take cool screenshots and stuff and make things more visible and help you during building. Um, this is like a small change. I could imagine wouldn't be too much of a big deal for Frontier to do. Uh, that would be a really great thing. And you know, um, also maybe to tackle on that topic in, by the way, you see, I have changed the direction completely now. Everything is turned around and this is the final setup. But, you know, in general, I think, um, because I've, I've heard a lot of people talking about Planet Zoo and Prehistoric Kingdom lately, um, some people, some people, um, you know, came in into the comments as well and were like, hey, why can't Planet Zoo do this? Why can't Prehistoric Kingdom be like this? And blah, blah, blah. Um, I just want to quickly tackle on that, just really quickly, for those of you who still listen to this episode. Um, I think it's it's not fair to any of them. You know, Planet Coaster is a game, um, uh, Planet Coaster in specific is a game that changed a lot of things uh, in the building genre, in the uh, management simulation game building genre, sandbox genre, if, if you will, um, with this piece by piece modular Building. If you remember how it smacked and smashed um, Roller Coaster Tycoon World back then and all the other games, um, they were a pioneer in this area. So n no other game had a toolbox like that. No other game uh, delivered something so... Um, yeah, so open and uh, so versatile, and so they definitely were a pioneer, pioneer in this area. And you, you shall not forget that Frontier is a fully fledged studio by now. Like you know, they have been a bit more of a smaller studio back to the Planet Coaster days, but they grew dramatically over the last couple of years. And uh, so, with being a bigger studio, a lot of different things come into play. So it's not like that easy as for an indie developer. And on the other hand side, if you look at Prehistoric Kingdom, for example, um, they are amazing developers, but there is like a small. Uh, very fast moving team. Um, they definitely took a lot of inspiration from Planet Coaster and Planet Zoo. And if it wasn't for these games, they wouldn't have so many features because they, you know, uh, they just could basically look into what Frontier has done and take the best part of them and prove them. You know, they did improve them. So I think it's not fair to, you know, tackle this so much. I think both games uh, delivered great stuff. And um, I know for a fact that the developers of Prehistoric Kingdom really love Planet Zoo and all the stuff that has been done in Planet Zoo and also uh, what Frontier is doing with the game. So it's a huge inspiration for them. And I think it's just not fair because there is no real foundation for a uh, comparison like that. First of all, the game has already been released um, for over a year now, Planet Zoo. Um, and the engine, obviously, from Planet Coaster is even way older than, than that. I mean, obviously, it's, it's been improved and developed over time, but there's a lot of differences in here. We really have to make sure that we look into this with, you know, a bit of a careful... Um, um, yeah, a bit, a bit more carefully and also looking at, at the overall context of things. Um, so I think it's just not fair. I think both games have something absolutely amazing to them. Uh, I love what, you know, what uh, they are doing with Prehistoric Kingdom. I can't wait for what they are doing after the alpha and for the finished game. And, uh, you know, we, we never know what the future holds uh, with Frontier. And I'm quite sure that the Planet franchise is not... Uh, ended yet and this is not the last game we will see in the planet franchise so yeah I, you know that just like a little platter year or platter year how do you say that in english platter year <laughs> I, I think it's platter year still but anyways um for for those two games i think that you know um the best thing is to um, let them benefit from each other. This is this is what we have look, to look into. But yeah, you can see while we were talking about this, um, the overall build over here took some shape. Um, I did now a huge viewing area to the opposite side of this terrace thing over here, or the raised platform. And um, it's gonna have some real cool stuff over here, which I'm going to talk about in the real time part. Um, yeah, but for now, 
This should be it mostly for my voiceover in the um, time lapse. I just want to quickly tackle back on the idea that we have so many different species in here um, because I haven't talked too much about it only at the beginning. So the idea was mainly to feature some of the new animals. So we do have the binturong in here. We have the proboscis monkey in here and the malayan tapir. Um, I, I know that the proboscis monkey and the malayan tapir actually do have an interspecies bonus, which is pretty sick, really cool stuff. Um, and they also uh, can share the habitat together with the Bornean orangutan. Um, however, they can't share it with the Binturong, but the bin Binturong can share it, if I remember correctly, with the proboscis monkey, something like that, or with the Malayan tempia. I forgot which of both it was. And so I was like, you know what, what? and when they can change, they can also change with them. You know, if you, if you are my friend, you are my friend too. So kind of like that logic. Um, I'm quite sure that, you know, it, it kind of would work like that. Um, but yeah, you never know. Anyhow, um, that should be it for my talky talk in the speed build. We'll see each other in uh, like about six, seven minutes in the real time part. But um, I really hope you guys enjoyed the time lapse so far. If you did enjoy and if you like the idea about this, please let me know in the comments your opinion on that and also your opinion about prehistoric kingdom and planet zoo. And now uh, let's jump forward. You get a little bit more time lapse and I'll be back with you guys in the real time part.
All right, everyone, here we are in the real-time part. And you can see this uh, changed a little bit also from the time-lapse. I actually added a lot of climbing over here. As you can see, there's a lot going on here in this area. And I'm in particular very happy with how this, this viewing over here turned out. I think it's actually very reminiscent of my half dome somewhat, but I think this is just the combination of wood and um, the climbing frames and stuff that makes it look like that. I think, you know, from a from a... Habitat standpoint, I think it looks really cool from over here. You can really go nicely in, have a lot of stuff like that. You know, you can see the Binturong moving over here. Look at that. This looks really cool. I really do love the fact how this looks. Um, I really, come, come on over here. Come on here. You know, I've, I've not yet seen the Binturong doing this hanging animation. Not even once. I'm really, I'm really not sure. I remember that with the Koala, I really had the same issue. The Koala didn't do any climbing for like two months after the pack um, until they patched a lot of things. I really sent my save files forth and back, but no matter what I did, I've not seen the Binturong done it once in the entire build. And I did for like hours already running. It's a little bit of a shame, but yeah. So um, over here you can see this is this is the viewing from the outside, but we all want to see it from the other side as well, right? So this is the front, and I'm gonna just quickly change the sun position a little bit so we have a bit of a better sight over here. There you go. Forget about those two, by the way. They are just in so that we do have something. Um, this is the this is the funky monkey house, you know, funky monkey house. As it's really, you know, the name is kind of really just similar, uh, just like in a little, little bit fitting, not really fitting. Then you come in and it just kind of drags you here to the left-hand side. You have got two viewings. You can view once into the sleeping area of the animals, not even one in here. Then you have like a little bit of a different view here. And then you go into, look at that one. That looked so cool here with a lovely one swimming. Um, and yeah, you do have actually this wonderful little water area. You can see I put a lot of screens in. I haven't done the uh, screens yet. I will put them in next time. Um, so we have them. And this is meant for like a video. You can have like an educational video. There are some benches in here so people can actually sit and have a look. And uh, this is then the wonderful viewing over here. I think it looks pretty cool. Um, and if you go and have a look down here, you can even see that I still need to do the drainage though. I completely forgot about that. But yeah, so we have this on this side and on the right hand side, you can see even more of a little viewing here. Um, this is mostly where the orangutans uh, roam around. And then what you potentially haven't seen too much from uh, the uh, speed build, we do also have a little bit of uh, uh, an area here. What is that thing doing? Anyways, um, and this is where I already put some screens in. This, these are obviously the game screens um, but yeah so I think it really works out pretty damn well I'm really happy with the build so far I really hope you guys are as well but now before we end this episode one thing we need to talk about really dramatically because um, I haven't got any big series running I mean the, the last series that is still running is Yosemite Valley and Yosemite Valley is obviously coming to an end because the zoo is just full and uh, by full I mean full it's it's like done um, and I really hope that we will be able to um, carry on with a new project soon. However, there's one thing I definitely want to make sure, and this is that we have something going on. Um, yeah, a little bit more, how shall I say that, a bit more open, a bit more loose, because I think this could be a good beginning over here. What do you think about making a more tropical zoo this time and really keeping that one as a first build? You know, the entrance to the zoo is here, but we can basically put it anywhere. Um, and I really would love to make like another zoo here out of this one, but just like keeping it loose. Um, if you guys have a um, setting for it, please let me know. Um, but I thought, you know, why not just making this like a beginning and maybe we can even translate that one to the aquatic dome or vice versa i don't know um please let me know in the comments down below what you think about um having this as a more like loose series in which we do some one-off builds and then create the zoo in in between um that would be interesting to know but let me know in the comments down below what you think about that i really hope that you guys are uh, up for it and if you have an idea for this let me know and yeah the biggest series will begin obviously later this year when we settle in a bit better but i thought you know not always making um, one habitat and then just leaving it what it is, we can actually keep on doing this one in here. We do also have some blueprints we could use for that and then uh, fill it to in together. But yeah, let me know in the comments down below. And also very important, uh, if you guys want to download this bit, it's now available for you guys as a blueprint. You can download that one. And um, I'm really curious to hear what you think about it. Anyways, thank you so much for watching. As always, if you like the stuff and you want to see more of it, uh, consider subscribing if you haven't already and please smash that like button. That helps me a lot. And now stay safe, everyone. Have a good time. And I talk to you in the next one. Goodbye.